It's been about six months now since I acquired the brand new Canon EOS R. I picked it up for the main purpose of shooting videos for this channel, along with client work that I produce on a regular basis within my digital production company. I have to say it's been an incredible camera coming up from the 5D Mark III and getting access to the video's autofocus capabilities has been an absolute game changer. Autofocus, 4K shooting, and the flip out touchscreen were the main drivers for the upgrade and I haven't looked back since. In particular, the eye autofocus feature ensures that every shot is always in focus, whether it's a face to camera scene like this or fast moving action scenes. As a side note, if you have just picked up your EOS R, it might be worth checking that you have the latest firmware as some improvements were made to the camera's software, mostly in relation to the autofocus capability in the latest firmware update. And if you want to learn how to update your firmware and check which firmware version you're on, I've actually produced a video on that topic and left a link to it in the description box below. Anyway, back to the premise of this video, which is a comprehensive guide to how to shoot with the Canon EOS R. This will be suited to the first time user as I'm going to outline all of the features and settings of the EOS R and also, if you're coming up from a previous generation of EOS and already have some familiarity with shooting video on Canon systems, I'll show you the best way to access the settings on this brand new EOS R. Before you begin shooting video for the first time, you need to go into the video settings section, which you can access via the main menu button on the rear of the camera. However, before tapping on this, you need to be in video mode first so that the menu shows you video settings and not photo settings. So let's start this tutorial with a demonstration of how to turn video mode on. For those of you coming up from a previous Canon DSLR, you might be wondering where the video mode button is. In the past, it was quite easy as there was always a dedicated button for video on the camera itself. However, the ergonomics are quite different on the EOS R and for some reason, Canon decided not to put a video mode button on the body at all. To get into video mode, you'll need to click on both the mode button on the top dial and the info button at the same time. When you do that, you'll see that the options on the top LCD display change from photo still mode settings to video settings. Before we take a look at the options here, we're going to jump straight into the video settings, which we can access by tapping on the main menu button on the back left of the camera. If you haven't done so already, flip out your screen so that it's facing you and either use the touch screen or the top scroll wheel behind the shutter button or main navigation dial at the back of the camera to get to section one of the menu, which is in red. Tap on number one in the sub menu and this will take you to the movie and sound settings section. The first option is where you change the resolution of the video. If you tap on this, you'll go into the detail of the settings of the currently selected resolution. At the moment, I have it set to 4K, so it tells me the resolution will be 3840 by 2160 at 25 frames per second. All I is for the highest quality. There are some options below, which include cinematic frame rate of 24 FPS or high frame rate, which records at 120 FPS. But if you choose high frame rate, it actually downgrades it to a 1280 by 720p movie, which is not even full HD of 1920 by 1080, and certainly it's not 4K. Let's now take a look at what other resolutions are available to choose from. The next option down is 4K 25 IPB, and IPB is a lower compression standard, which is useful if you have a limited amount of storage available, as it uses much less data than the all eye compression. I've used both and usually make my decision based on the level of production. If it's a commercial project that requires a highest level of detail and clarity and ability to recover highlights and shadows, I'll always go with all eye. In a well-lit scene for videos like this, I can quite often use a lower quality IPB in order to save space. And quite frankly, it's very hard to spot the difference between the two under these types of lighting conditions. The next one down is FHD. 50p all eye and just below is 50p IPB. As we move along past the full HD options, there's also standard definition HD, which is lower in resolution. 
Now, you might notice overall that these numbers look a little bit different to what you're seeing on your camera. If that's the case, it might be that you're on the NTSC system. The camera is capable of shooting both PAL and NTSC standards. So if you want to toggle between the two, go into the yellow section, subsection three, and at the very top, you can toggle between PAL and NTSC to choose the appropriate frame rates. Next up, we have Digital IS. This stands for Digital Image Stabilization. So only use this if you're using the camera handheld and don't have any external stabilization options, such as a gimbal or a slider. Also check your lens to see if it has any image stabilization, as it may be overkill to use both optical and digital stabilization together. Having said that, you could always experiment with it on and off and see which one works best for your shooting conditions. Next up in subsection two of the movie settings, we get lens aberration correction. Peripheral illumination is set to on, distortion is off and chromatic aberration is off. These represent minor imperfections that you get in all lenses really. So I would leave them all set to the defaults here, unless you're having issues with distortion, which you might usually see on wider lenses and you wanna turn that distortion on to see if it makes any difference, go ahead and test it out and determine whether you wish to use it. The next is time-lapse. This is a style of video where you're capturing still shots at long intervals and compiling them into a single movie, which essentially has the effect of slowing down time. To enable time-lapse, tap on the first menu item and choose whether you want to enable 4K or full HD time-lapse. Once you make your selection, the previously grayed out items in this section are illuminated and you can change the settings of the time-lapse. Interval determines how many seconds between each shot, which has the effect of speeding up or slowing down your time-lapse. I usually choose anywhere from two seconds to five seconds for a medium speed time-lapse. If I wanted to capture a longer period extending for half a day or a full day, then I might increase it up to 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or even a minute. If you tap on the number of shots, it will show you in the gray bar how long your time-lapse movie would run for given your current interval. You can increase or decrease the number of shots to get the movie to conform to the duration that you require. You can get it to auto expose on the first frame only or have it take a reading of each frame and expose accordingly. The next option will save you a lot of battery life and that is to turn the screen off automatically after the time lapse has begun. The next option is for remote control operation where you have a third party peripheral or a Canon remote control device. Section three lets us adjust the exposure, compensation, which we also do when shooting and change the ISO. We can apply an auto lighting optimizer and highlight tone priority. Next, we get metering, timing, and if you want more control over your aperture, you can enable one eighth stop increments. When you do this, you get to control the aperture ring in finer detail. So instead of jumping straight from 1.8 to 2.4, for example, you get eight stops in between to gradually increase or decrease the amount of light coming into the sensor. And in the final section of your movie settings, a very important one, and that is white balance. This is a breakout topic in itself. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it right now, but the white balance lets you adjust and determine the color in your particular scene that you're shooting. And that's gonna be dependent on whether you're indoors or outdoors and what types of lights you're using. Next is Picture Style, which allows you to use Canon presets that are designed for different types of scenes, such as portrait, landscape, fine detail, etc. I tend to use neutral and do all of my adjustments in post-production. However, if you wanna save time during editing, one of these presets can save you a lot of time. The next option allows you to record in Canon Log. Log is a flat profile with no enhancements at all, so you can apply LUTs in post-production to color your video. I would suggest that you only use this if you're at an advanced level of video editing as the raw image that comes from the camera log format is very flat and unflattering, designed purely for the purpose of coloring after the fact. You can choose between 8-bit internal or 10-bit for external recording via HDMI. And finally, an option to apply noise reduction when shooting at high ISO speeds, which is a good option under low light conditions. 
Now that we've done all of that, we're ready to start shooting our first video. As I mentioned earlier, and assuming that you've already done so, you get into movie recording mode by tapping on the mode and info button simultaneously. If you tapped on these and found your way back into photo mode, do it again and toggle back into video mode. Now I'm gonna get you to flip out your screen for optimal viewing, as we'll be using this not only to monitor the video footage, but to access most of the settings so we can make adjustments along the way. Tap on the shutter button lightly if your screen ever goes black as it may be going into battery saver mode and it quite often does this. Now tap on the info button on the back of the camera to go into the different LCD modes. Keep tapping until you get to the one that looks like what you're seeing on screen. And this is actually an alternate way of accessing many of the features and settings that I demonstrated in that previous section. In this mode, the screen is black and you use the touch screen to change the aperture, ISO, exposure compensation, and more. Tap on the set button just below to activate and then use your finger on the left and right buttons around the back dial to go into each setting. Now my favorite way of monitoring and adjusting settings as I'm shooting, tap on the info again, and now you should get a real-time display of what the camera is pointing at. You can touch on the square focus box on the screen to focus on objects in the scene and make quick changes to the shutter, aperture, and ISO below by tapping on the three buttons. There's a magnify glass on the bottom right that you can use to quickly zoom in and check focus. And at the top right-hand corner, there's a Q icon which gives you access to extra features while still showing you the scene in front of you. And this is my preferred way of changing the settings as I'm shooting, as you don't have to take your eye off what is happening in front of you. And it just tends to be a little bit faster. Now that we have these settings available on the top left, you can change the focus mode, tap on the AF focus icon. And then on the bottom row, you can toggle between eye autofocus, one point focus, expanded area focus, expanded around zone AF, large zone vertical and large zone horizontal. Each has their advantages. And again, experiment to find out which one works best for the scene that you're shooting. As I mentioned earlier for me, most of the work I do is people speaking face to camera. So for that application, I tend to use eye tracking. If I'm shooting objects, I might choose one point AF and so on. Next, you can change video mode. I had it set to 4K from when I was in that section earlier on, but for convenience, rather than having to exit out every time I wanna change my resolution, I can do it right here on the front screen. The next is the audio recording level and following that, the headphone level for those monitoring audio from the ESR using your headphones. Next is the movie digital IS. You can toggle it on, off, or put it into enhanced mode. Top right is a return arrow to remove the menu options from the screen. Next is white balance. Tap on this and you can select between auto white balance, indoors, cloudy, tungsten, flash, custom, etc. Now white balance is quite a complex topic. So I'm going to leave all of the detail for another day. And when that video is ready, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. But for those of you not sure what to select right now, you're probably best off just leaving the auto white balance setting on and Canon will do a really good job of representing the colors as faithfully as possible. The next option is auto lighting. And finally, you also get a HDR mode, which stands for high dynamic range, which essentially blends some of the shadows and highlights together to create a more even tone. So that's pretty much it. An introduction to all of the settings you need to start shooting video with your brand new Canon EOS R. Once you're ready to go, simply tap on the record button at the top of the camera, which is situated behind the front shutter and dial wheel. To pause or stop recording, tap that button again. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this information helpful. If you wanna see more videos about the Canon EOS R, I've created a few already, which you can find on my channel homepage and will most likely be producing a few more. So if you wanna be notified when any new videos become available on the channel, feel free to hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.